a lot of, lot of parting into your music lately here too, huh? Uh, yeah, since he was born, um, like I remember we'll take was that Hope Man 3, like yeah. the whole project I recorded like with him in my arms pretty much. So Damn. studio set up in the house. So while I'm recording, like he was home with me all day. So if I'm mixing, he right here in my lap. Like he would just like looking at the Pro Tools screen and seeing the lines and then when- And taking it all in, trust yeah. me. All the, the chat loving that, man. They say you pulling at their heartstrings right now, <laughs> man. That's what's up. And it, it, so, it, it put, built something in them. Cause even when I went up to Sway, like um not at the radio station, but the way that I got up there was going to South by Southwest. And we went there, he was six months at the time. So it was really just me, wifey and the baby. And we just went out there on a leap of faith. Um, I, I made my way on stage and I did my freestyle with him in my arm. Oh, you know what? Before you get into that, before you get into that, cause I know that's kind of a turning point in your life and I want to kind of build up to that. All right. And then we are gonna go from there, right? Yes, sir. And so did we get all the kids? How many you got all together? Two. So you got a young boy and then your daughter there? Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now, all right, let's go back to high school, middle school, right? Elementary? Oh yeah, yeah, elementary. So boom, you know, I do the song, it's called Basketball. Um, the teacher recognized the talent in me. So he would push me to like do different talent shows. He had us at Chester High when we was only in fifth grade. So I was over at Chester wow. High doing talent shows, performing a song. I think it was a couple songs. Wow. We ended up doing another one. We was recording on the karaoke machine, like with the cassette tapes and everything. And um, at my at that time, you know, my main focus was basketball. Like that's all I wanted to do. So I didn't even take the music serious until high school. But throughout okay. high school, like I did, I had a rap group. Like it was just something we did for fun. And is that was that the TL? What was it? TL something back in the day? TLP. That was the that's that's the brand right now. But that all started, you know, after high school. But this was okay. middle school days. So I don't, we probably had a crazy name back then, but. Word, word. <laughs> so when I got to um high school, I played basketball ninth ninth grade. Um, my joint team Mac was like an after school music program where they had a studio in Chester High, so they would let us come in there and record. And then uh tenth grade is when I tried out for the basketball team again, and I didn't make the team that year for some reason. You know, That's I, Chester High now. We in high? Yeah, we still at Chester High all four years. So okay. I thought I was like Jordan, but I, I, I was wrong. So <laughs> they didn't pick me. And I remember I was devastated. Like that was my main dream, my main goal, focus and everything. Well, let, let me ask you this. Did you, did you ever play in them 7th seven, uh, seven Street tournament? No, nah, I didn't play 7th Street. I played in the uh, Brookhaven Parkside League. So okay, that okay. was like over there dropping 30 in the Brookhaven League. But <laughs> word, 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 word. But that, That's over by, is that over by Toby Farm over there? Yeah, it's like, like, not really Toby Farns, but like Aston, Aston, oh, okay. Caven area. Okay, I mean, okay, Toby okay. Included, but you know, it was like one of those type leagues. You know, it was really, I was like really the only black kid in the whole league. Me and word, another word. guy, you know, who was actually living in Toby Farns with me. But you know, word. he was over there dominating. But when I got to Chester High, it was a different story. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, that's so a different, we, that's we, a different, we, skipping 10th grade, right? We, we ain't doing basketball. And then what, what happened after that? All right, so I got cut from the team. You know, well, I not okay. cut from the team, but I just didn't make it past tryouts. And I was devastated, man. Like, my world was Kiki crushed. Wish. And I remember going home and I was just writing, like, a bunch of raps. Like, I always was writing raps throughout middle school, ninth grade, but 10th grade, that's when, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, I guess that was my avenue to, you know, release that passion, release all the frustration that I was feeling and just putting it into raps. So um, I think probably a week later, like a week or two later, uh, coming to school, you know, one of the classmates, you know, they would come through the gym class and it was like, uh, they set up a battle. It was a rap battle we had in the bleachers in the, um, uh, in the gym, in Chester High gym. And I was like my first rap battle right after getting cut. So all that aggression and pain that I was feeling, like I just, Put it out I, I, I took that out on the next man and so, that was like the start of the music career. Like after that, that's when my name started spreading through the school. It was like week after week, like they sneaking me into different lunch periods. Like I'm battling seniors, I'm battling 11th grade. Like I'm just running through the whole school. And after that, it was just over. Now, do you do you still uh, do you still keep up with battle rap at all? Like, do you, are you are you tuned in to Smack and all that? Every one of them, man. Where Every one of them? Well, who, who's your who's your favorite? Chill out, buddy. Who's your favorite uh, battle rapper right now? Just give me um, one name. 
Mm. Give me three. Give me three names. Give me three names. Three. Ah, that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. Hi. That's tough. Um. Hey. Ah. Or or even if not right now, back in the day, who used to? I would rock definitely with? have to say Geechee and Rome. I would kind of okay. put them together just because you know they. Yeah, you know I'm saying I get them both the same spot. Geechee and Rome. Um. Fact. I like twerk heavy, man. I know twerk been messing up a lot lately, but I rock with twerk still. And Word. If I had to pick one more. Mm, that'd be hard, like, cause I would want to say DNA, yeah. but then I would want to say, uh, yeah, Lux. Oh, I can't forget about Mook and Lux. Oh, well, the gray hoodie too Lux. Many, man, it's too many, man. And they, and they, so do you, do you, you and your wife watch together or? Yep. We, that's a word okay and it's I thought, I thought, even like you know in our boyfriend girlfriend days like that was a way that we would connect like she wasn't into it before that but once i brung her into that world it's like she automatically clicked and we both like watching it together and just building a connection like, now we're we, we gonna skip a little we're gonna skip around a little bit right so we we left high school how did you and your wife meet where where did y'all meet at all right so uh y'all familiar y'all from chester y'all familiar with sam and sam's right sam and sam most definitely wait toby farms uh, or is they, is one over there on uh? But they moved to Upland. Upland, yeah, yeah, okay, in the little parking lot, big parking lot up in the, on the hill right there. Yeah, so uh, I was working at Sam and Sam's at the time, and um, yeah, one night she had came in the store, and you know the store was busy, like it was super busy, and um, uh, I had the longest line in the store for some reason, like it was other registers, other cashiers, but I was the only one that had all these customers in line. And I seen her come down the aisle and she decided to wait in my line. So it was like, okay, you know, out of all these lines, she waiting in this one, you know, she can see something that she liked or something. So she uh, 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 line, you know, we making an eye contact, little stuff. Hold up, did you get did you get in that line because you saw him or that just happened how you happened to get up in that was it? No, I got in that line because he watched me with every aisle in that mark. Uh, <laughs> he, he was like, you know. Like, you know, yeah, I have out. my eye. I have my eye on it. He's tuned in. Okay. I was, I was trying to match his energy a little bit. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so we and Sam and Sam. So you cracking from from behind the register? It, well, I, I don't even think I made a move. It was just like eye contact. It was one. It was just small stuff. And um, later on that night. Well, he leaving out. Was it that night or the next day, something like that? I think it was later on that night. I had put like a status up on Facebook, like making a joke. I was big comedian on Facebook back then. So I put up, it was probably a corny joke, but to me it was funny. So I put up <laughs> a joke on Facebook and um, she commented it. And when she commented it, she said something about like peeking or something like that. So I'm like, you know what this girl talking about? And I never put two and two together. So then we went to the inbox and it was like, uh -huh. you know, what this what this mean? Like what you mean by peeking? So then when I clicked the default picture, that's when it all had came full surface. And I realized that was the same girl that was just in my line. So um yeah, from there it was just over. I guess she couldn't resist me and now I'm good. when was that? Like you. <laughs> that's not like our story. Yeah, she she been following me around. But so yeah. <laughs> Not, you know that's a joke, but anyway, <laughs> you, ain't nobody follow nobody for eighteen years. You know what I mean? We follow each other type shit. So, <laughs> pardon me, pardon me. But yeah, so now I mean, so y'all left. You left high school. How how old were y'all when y'all met? Um, that was two thousand and nine. So I was okay. 19. Okay, oh, nineteen. Wow. She was okay. We, stop. Get the. Out of here. I was 19. She was 22 when we met. Get the freak out of here, <laughs> that yo. Was, that was in 1999. Wow. Get out of here, man. 1999. Yeah, it was something about she seen a youngin and you feel me? She just couldn't resist me. Man. Oh, please. You sound like him. She seen the youngin and couldn't not, resist. No. Look, look, where where are we? Now? I like that story. Where are we at, babe? Where are we at? Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm All right, she got me roped in. She wrote me in. <laughs> no, we got it. Mean. No, we got each other. God got us both. But uh, but yeah. So all right. So nineteen. So you just left high school. Yeah, I just left. Yeah, two thousand and nine. So um, I just left high school. Two thousand and eight was That's when I graduated. Now, but you already crazy. start rapping on on screen because I know the one we seen was oh eight. Yeah, well, I was actually on um, which one y'all see in oh eight? 
That's the uh, the restaurant John and the hoods. You and some of like the them battles, hood. and even the battles. And some of the, and the Delaware versus Chester dip, I think, was around that time uh, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, all them Delaware. I mean, Chester versus Philly, Chester versus Delaware. Uh, we was travels, man. It was all over. But now, 2009 is actually when I was on 106 in Park. So this was okay. Talk talk about that. How you get on 106 in Park? Um, how did I get on there? I think I somebody told me this from like on Facebook. Like you know, somebody just randomly told me, hey, you know, they having auditions in New York. So this was the summer of 2009. So um, at that time, like you know, the grind was crazy. You know, we was always traveling wherever we needed to go to catch the opportunity because you know, coming mm -hmm. from Chester. We ain't have nothing there. So I was mm -hmm. like, you know, me and my homies is let's get a rental car. We going to New York, uh, wherever we needed to go. So I went up there for the auditions. The audition started at nine o'clock in the morning. So the way they okay. went, it was like they took groups of tens. So they put, you know, each person against each other. And then the winner of that one had to stay in a room for the next group of 10. So from like 9 a.m. to like 3 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I just battled the entire day. Like I went up wow. there with some, you know, as rappers, you're going to have some verses that you write, but you don't know what right. to expect. I'm thinking maybe it's just one person I got to battle. So at some point, it's like I'm, I don't even have no more written. It's like I'm just freestyle off the top. I even, you feel, I, don't, I wouldn't prefer to do something like that for a, a stage like BT. But I was mm -hmm. in a zone so much that I just didn't care. Like I was just blacking out. And I think it was like out of that whole day, it might've been five of us that got picked to come up to the show. And um, mm -hmm. I didn't get my date until December. So I actually was on 106 in part December 9th of 2009. December 9th, 2009. And that was the Freestyle Fridays or what, what was you doing in what capacity was you on it? Fridays. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So was you running into like uh What's the boy named Blind Fury and all them type cats? Was that around that time? I think Blind Fury was on. I think he had just went like the five weeks and got the champion um, right before I went on there. Then I think after mm. I went on there, uh, it was Bones Brigante who went on. The oh. So I was like right in the middle of that era. That's what's up. That's what's up. Moon. Moon. You remember Moon? That sound familiar. Mm. I know he was on 106 and Park back in the day too. But oh, we used to be on them joints every Friday, yeah. man. Freestyle we, Friday. Yeah, we always yeah, love. Was to after pop. AJ? I see somebody in the chat asked, "Was that after AJ and Free?" That's back when uh, it was Terrence and Roxy. Ah, mm. Terrence and Rox. That's before AJ and Free, right? No, nah, that was that's after, after AJ oh, okay. and Free. Uh, I don't know. Well, All right. yeah, they did. actually called me back again. Like I was there December, and you know that's when I actually got to see the politics of like TV and the behind the scenes because I went crazy. But somehow I didn't win that day. So it's like mm -hmm. the whole city of Chester, people from around the world, like they was just hitting BT up. Like, no, y'all cheated him. Like, it's no way he should have lost. And it was to Word. the point where two months later, they had to hit me back and say, like, we wow. back up here again. So, I went so they back, brought you back? Yeah, I went back up there. Now it's 2010. So this is March of 2010. And so okay. my second return up there which was the same outcome, but, you know, I already knew as far as, like, the politics. So I went up there with a different mindset as far as how I could capitalize it once I'm off the show. And um, now, and how was your buzz in the city at this point? Everybody was tuned in? Chester? Everybody. like, And it was crazy because it was so much going on at the time. Like, this was actually the year that I got shot. So I got shot in the summer of 2010. So prior leading up to that, like, 106 in part was March of 2010 by april i'm like performing at every sweet 16 party at every teenage spot every uh club like i was performing everywhere and then by what was that probably may i had did a, a freestyle on 100.3 to beat this was back when dj touch tone was on the radio up in philly and everything so i went okay. on i did a freestyle and killed it so much that they used my verse as like a commercial for that entire That's month crazy. so all throughout the day That's... like people would randomly hit me up like yo i just heard your freestyle on a commercial like i wasn't even catching it i would catch it sometimes but people was hearing it non-stop so it's like month after month things was just building and growing and growing and then june come and this was uh -huh. the same situation That's like crazy. oh hold up hold up bro, bro hold up one second you froze up on me wait 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 oh Oh, it was so good. Hold up, chat, y'all hold tight. No, we ain't frozen. Hold tight, we gonna get him back. 
Appreciate y'all being here, y'all. Appreciate y'all coming through, man. Y'all hold tight. We about to get Heist back on the screen. He, he having a little... We having a little connection issues here. Most oh, there we go. Good. Okay, we got you back. Can you hear me, bro? My size, you part of the reason. Okay, good, good. Yeah, it was just it froze for a half a second. Now, um, so we 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 went to the 106. We did the second appearance, and then I'm going to let you tell. I know it was an incident. You know what I'm saying? At some point, mm -hmm. that kind of that kind of curbed your career for a second. Was that soon after that, or was that long after that? Oh yeah, so I was saying that in 106, that was March of that year. By okay, who I'm performing everywhere, like all over the tri-state area. Uh, May, same thing. Shows was coming in consistently. Um, and then I did a freestyle on 103, 100.3. That was on commercial for a month. So as the um the uh, career was growing, you know, I had a booking out of out of state, which was like normal. You know, I was getting a lot of bookings at the time. And so this was June. And so that was when everything took its break when, you know, I had the situation where I got shot and that kind of okay. put everything that was building up, up until that point, it kind of got put on hold from there. So it's like the way it felt was like I was this close because everything that I was doing, like I had a mixtape called Little Living Proof that I was recording that same month, which was crazy. Before I got shot, I had a mixtape that was titled Living Proof. It was hosted by Jalil B. Like I had mm. Lil hosting the whole mixtape. This was at a time when he oh, John Lil Beats. He was at the height of his career, so it's like everything that was going for me was like just shooting up so fast. And then that's when you know everything just took a turn. You know John Lil Beats, uh, uh, his brother Dre. Yeah, yeah, I know. Went to, person, went to the high, but I know, I know of him. I went, I went, I worked with him over at uh, uh, Llama Detention Center, and I worked at the uh, Pen Dot over there. You know, Pen Dot in Delaware County. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was working there for a hot minute, oh, okay. supervising that center. So, but I might have seen you coming in and out of there. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you didn't recognize him, I, feel like I probably would have recognized time. you. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> but that's what's up. So, all right. So you got shot. And where was this at? This was out of town. Yeah, this was in Delaware. D where? Okay. I had a uh, show in Delaware one night. I was performing at a skating rink, and um, I know the way they promoted it. It was super big. Like I remember. Remember he said he had like 10,000, the promoter had like 10,000 flyers that he had throughout everywhere. And that's how the flyers was marking it. Like BT 106 and Park's own Young Chief. Like it was real big. And at the time we was young. So, you know, we never looked at it like we need security. You know, it was just me and my homies traveling around doing what we was doing. But, you know, that night, like it was, it was a good show and everything inside the building. Like we got a lot of love. Um, I mean, I guess it came mostly from the females, and I guess that's where, you know, those feelings start coming in with, you know, with the guys, I guess, just wasn't feeling. Delaware, you know Delaware don't rock with, you know. Yeah, that. and it's always, yeah. <laughs> it's always, always been something that. between that, like, I know bowling alleys, you know, used to always be a shootout every time at a bowling alley and all of that. Word. But, to us, like we always was up there, like we did plenty of things in Delaware. So this, like, <laughs> that's what he always be saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to stay at that skating rink down there in Delaware. I can't remember the name of it off top, but uh, but yeah, it was always some beef going on. Or they'd come out CNN, John. You remember the CNN? Dip? See, I performed there plenty of times. Where? Yeah. That's what's up, man. You taking me back now? <laughs> That's what's up. I think it was Elmwood in in Delaware. It was, it was Elmwood, I think, or Ellesmere. Yeah. Ellesmere. Yeah. I don't know if they still had that joint when y'all was coming up, but so anyway, the state of Delaware. It's talking about the state of Delaware. It's Delaware. right down the street. It's actually yeah, from Chester, Delaware is literally by ten minutes less, less than ten minutes, than five that. minutes. Yeah, you feel me? And so we was always back and forth. So I know y'all was doing the same bowling thing. Bowling alley, first state. First state bowling alley, Delaware. Yeah, Wilmington. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And so, so let me ask you this. Um, after you got shot, how, how long was that sidelining you? And what did that do to your motivation? Did it increase your motivation? Did it make you feel like maybe this ain't the right way to go? You see I me? Mean? Well, how, how did that, how did that? I mean, it kind of, it put me on hold for probably about a year, but not as far as like, as far as me working. Cause as soon as I got out the hospital, I was right back at it. But as far as physically, like I had to take at least like a year to recover. Um, the way That's mentally what it did, it was like, if anything, it gave me like, more drive and motivation from it because it was like to to make it through what i made it through like to see what i seen like i literally had like a near-death experience so uh, you know the doctors was telling my family that you know i may never walk again 
So when I got shot, when I was on the ground, like I instantly didn't have no feeling in my legs. So as I to get up, up, pull myself apart, like I can't, can't move nothing in front of waist down. Mm. So, you know, just going through that whole experience, like I was awake for that until going on an operating table and, you know, they had to actually put me to sleep so they could start doing the surgeries. But everything up to that point, like I was conscious, I was fully aware of what was going on. And, um, yeah, I think like I stayed strong throughout the whole time. I was in the hospital for about a month. Um, it didn't hit me until I remember one day I went to therapy. And so, uh, as I was sitting in therapy, I was looking around and I was the youngest person in there. This was probably my third week uh, in the hospital. And so it was like elderly people, like it was um, a lot of older people in there and it was nobody like even half my age. And so they was teaching me like how to live paralyzed pretty much. Like they gave oh. different devices on, you know, like how to pull your pants up with like this tool with this hook or how to put uh. your socks on and like, and that's when it broke me down. That was the first day and the only day I broke down in the hospital because it was like a real moment, you know, when I'm looking around in the room and it hit me like, this is my new life. Like, like I, I won't be walking no more. This is how I have to live and function. And um, it was probably a week after that is when I started getting uh, some pain in my, my feet. And it was like, mm. if it was super, uh, like pins and needles type of feeling. Intense, yeah. So, uh, you know, the doctors were saying it was a good thing because I was able to feel something, but everything I was describing, it wasn't there. Like, I would feel like it was super cold. They would touch my feet and say, you know, my feet is hot. So it, I guess it was just from the nerve damage, but it was things that was coming back. So throughout the um, last week in the hospital, you know, they would give me a walker and try to like get me to take steps from the bed to the bathroom. And it was okay. like, like, like I couldn't move, like I, I couldn't move one foot. I couldn't take a step or do none of that. And by the last few days in there, like I remember me and my sister, we used to go for laps around the lobby um, of the hospital on that floor. And like, I could take baby steps. And eventually, you know, that ended up leading me into crutches. So it was just a whole, like that whole situation, man. Like I even ran so the injuries. Uh, so I had a lacerated spleen. They had to okay. construct my stomach, lost uh. four liters of blood. Both of my lungs collapsed. Uh, uh. Moved my left kidney, took half uh. the pancreas, uh, fractures in my spine. Jeez. Um, anything else? How many bullets is this? This was one bullet. Word, dang. Way of it was it, where it, it was it, placed, yeah. It on my, in my abdomen and it just ricocheted off of everything and came out like, like literally my exit wound is like half less than an inch from my spine so that's the only reason why it didn't really go ahead and paralyze you right all right and then, like even when i would get my x-rays and everything when they would see it like it would always be like a blur so they knew it was like fractures there in my spine then they never found the bullet so then it was like they wasn't so you only know what kind of gun it was that shot you what? I mean, I, I know it had to be a small one because, of course, you know, if it was something big, it would have went in and went straight out. But for the right, right. way that it traveled, like, I know it had to be a small one. And uh, Now, so somebody in the chat asked, are you still suffering from that or have you what was the recovery process? Do you still have any issues with that? Uh, the recovery process, man, was just I know at the time I was in the gym, I was working out a lot. So I know the doctors was telling my family, like the way I was keeping up with my health, that was actually part of, you know, what helped me recover so quickly and everything because of my body. And um, after that, you know, I did therapy. I was on a, a walker. Then that's when I graduated to the crutches. I did a cane for probably six months. And um, yeah, after that, you know, I was just back on my feet. Now, there was a transition from Young Chief to Navelle Heist. Now, what, was that after you came out or before? Well, nah, so when I came out, um, all right, so that was June. When I came back home, by the end of the summer, I think I was back in the studio by like the end of August. So I was super determined to the point, like when I was home, I still wanted to put my mixtape out. Cause now we remember, you know, I had the mixtape Living Proof three weeks okay. before I got okay. shot. Right, and that kind of right. when I when I came up with the title, it was like you know I was tired of listening to rappers having all of this stuff that they lying about in the rap. So when I came up with Living Proof, 
it was like, okay, I'm gonna show y'all a rapper that's literally everything I'm rapping about, like my mixtape cover. Like I am. It had everything that I'm saying, like you got newspaper articles, you got actual pictures of billboards that I was on in Chester, you got 106 in part, like all the stuff that I'm talking about, you could see it on the artwork. But after, you know, the shooting, it kind of gave Living Proof a whole different meaning. So that mm. just told me, like, even at the time without me knowing it, like God was already connecting those dots to the whole mm. Living Proof movement. So when I came home, you know, I back went straight back in the studio once I was able to move around a little bit more. And by the end of the summer, I went in there, I recorded a song called I Made It. And this is with my homie, my homie Kaz went and got me a beat. He brought it to me, we got to the studio. I had to record like holding a pillow on my stomach because I still had like the staples, Jeez. still had the staples in my stomach when I yelled, like I couldn't talk too loud because you know, my stomach's still tight, like I'm patched up. So I recorded in the booth holding a pillow, but that just was like showing how determined that I was. Like I wasn't letting nothing stop me, getting straight back to it. I released the project. And it's like everything just was going up from there, like newspapers um, in Chester, Daily Times, the Chester paper, they come into my house doing interviews. It was like a real big movement that started taking place. And I still couldn't even walk at the time, but then I'm on a cane. And then a few more months later, you know, I'm performing at the Eagle Stadium. So it was mm. an opportunity that I got where it was like, of course, like a pre-show. So before coming into the stadium, out there, you know, in the front, they had the stage set up. So I'm performing while I'm still on the cane. So this is like all throughout my recovery process where it's like, there was no time for chilling. Like I I, I recovered, you know, I, I sat for a couple of weeks and it was straight back to grinding, working as much as I could. And uh, yeah. That's what's up, that's what's up. Now, let me ask you this brother. Um, now, well, actually, let me first say this. The Zoom call might cut off, in which case we're going to play some music and then I'm going to send you another invitation. What? I know your time kind of short. What What time? How, how much time you are you kind of restricted? You got to bounce here in a second? Oh, we good, man. We rocking. Okay. Bet, bet, bet. Because uh, I know we got the chat got some questions for you and I know we still got some. My wife got some questions for y'all as well. And, uh, you know, this will take a little bit longer than I wanted because we, we going into details that y'all you probably hadn't gone into in interviews before. But... We just wanted to see how God actually played his role in your life and, and how it led to this point. And, and uh, so far from, man, from what I see, that, that setback, what other people would say was a setback, was actually a motivator. Yeah. Would you call it that? I told you his fumble was a touchdown. Fumble was a touchdown. I heard the bar, your fumble was a touchdown. Is that right? Is that how you feel? Yes, sir. Definitely. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Now, so it eventually led to South by Southwest. Was that down the line or how, how did that come to play? All right, so this was like a wide gap in between there. So when I came, oh, okay, it was back to, you know, the grind young chief, uh, probably what, two years later, you know, that's when I started forming, you know, my, my, my label team living proof, you know, I was the only artist, but I would have DJs, engineers, producers, like everything that I needed. So we rented out some space in Chester. We had our own studio, Team Living Proof Studios. And this is probably two to three years later after that. So now I'm fully recovered. And um, this is when things start to shift. I'm traveling a lot more. I was back and forth to Atlanta. And that's when I started switching the brand up from Young Chief. And then I went to Chiefy. So before Navelle Heights, in between that small gap, it was uh, Chiefy. So that's when, you know, I had the vintage look. Everything was like the old school image you know i was doing that i was on world star like things were just mm. heavy and it was like the peak of my career so i went to south by southwest but that wasn't the year that i met sway i went out there i performed on uh, stages with philly crowds and everything and um i moved to atlanta 2015 so now this is five years later after you know recovering and everything so once i get to atlanta you know that's when i had that moment where it was like I'm away from family. I'm away from friends. I'm away from uh, just everybody I know. You know, I had moved here with three of my homies from Chester. So, you know, I felt like that was the perfect opportunity that God started speaking to me. Like, it was no outside voices. I didn't have no family here in Atlanta. I didn't know nobody at the time. So, it was like literally me and my homies. So, when I would be in my room, it's like God would just start giving me the vision. He would just start flowing through me. So, I'm hmm. going to fast. I did the Daniel fast. And that was hmm. April of 2015. Come on, man. We used to do the Daniel fast too, trying to get this young boy right here. <laughs> 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 
right. <laughs> but uh but yeah so all right now now one, one thing i wanted to touch on you feel me that uh this that the fan too surreal. wait hold up did he say what year did you say you moved to atlanta 2015 15 that's when we came back down here and moved to georgia we we, we was living in uh we was georgia. living in uh uh sharon hill right matter of fact we was living on no we were living in clifton heights clifton heights before we moved back down here real feel me like right on uh and we moved here with no job no to the job. leap of faith yeah. in <laughs> see that that's crazy how that's lining up you know what i mean it's 20 so we just look we the same age he the same age when when we got together when we got together as you and your wife right we both moved back here to georgia in 2015 <laughs> it's hilarious to me and then uh we we moved to hepzibah or augusta better known as augusta georgia we moved to augusta in 2015 no jobs we were promised jobs when we got here we we had a feeling that we might not have jobs but we just moved here both left like he was supervising pen dot and i had a job as a social worker we left here left everything no explanation like like in a week and a half like he looked at me like you ready to go I'm like we just packed up everything we didn't know where we were going none of that <laughs> and just moved here in 2015 into to georgia word word we yeah. got we got actually somebody else in the chat that moved from philly to alabama down south so that's kind of the story for a lot of people but <laughs> you know what i mean but um <clears throat> now one thing i want to touch on that the chat might not realize is that you do you do not use any curse words in your in your in your records, right? right? Was that something that started way back, or was that something that changed over time? Nah, I, I was doing that since high school. Um, I mean, not all through high school. Like, of course, my battles. You know, I was blacking out. Like, I'm saying the craziest thing I could think of. But right, right. Remember, um, was that 12th grade? I think it might have been 12th grade. And um, I was I I got invited to go with uh this like youth group in Chester, um. It was like uh kind of like y'all you know peer leading we had like peer leading in high school so we uh -huh. was like the middle school you know work with the kids there and stuff so it was a group that they had where they was going to a youth convention in philly and um at the time they just knew i did music so they invited me to come up there with them and uh it was a uh, it was actually i think that was the way that i got on 100.3 if i ain't mistaken because it was, wow. this was back no this was before touch tone so this was on um, dj tasha mckia and so she was hosting a talent show so i performed there and the music that i performed it wasn't clean but it was good music so i remember she called me back on stage like the talent show wasn't even for this it wasn't to pick a winner or nothing like that but she like stopped the show after my performance caught me hmm. up there and was like I just feel that this kid is going to be a star. So I'm in 12th grade. Wow. Um, She's like, I feel like this kid is going to be a star. I could see it in him. She like the performance, the song, the lyrics, everything that you're doing. Like I could just feel it. And she was like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this song to the radio tonight and I'm going to play this live on the air. So she asked, Word. is it clean? So I'm like, nah, it's not. And so she mm -hmm. told me like, you never know the opportunities that you may miss out on. So she like, mm. you always want to have a clean version with you, like wherever you go. And so mm. to me, I kind of felt sad. You know, I was leaving there. Like I don't miss my opportunity of getting on the radio, like 12th grade. This mm. was a big deal. It might've been 11th grade actually. And so I'm like, this was a big deal. And um, later on that day, this was, I think my space big, back when my space was my space. Y'all remember my space. <laughs> <laughs> so she ended up finding me on MySpace somehow. And, you know, back then we ain't have flyers or nothing like that. So I don't even know how she connected the two. But she found my page on MySpace, sent me an inbox and told me, like, I believe in you so much. And I love this song so much that we edited ourselves at the station. So they ah. did a clean version for me at the radio and then still aired it on the air that same day. So to me, it was like, of course, I could easily just have a clean version of my music to the side and take that with me. But then I also noticed, like, you know, I want my stuff to be universal. Like, when I'm in the car with my kids, we may have a radio one. But sometimes, you know, they saying some crazy stuff on there. So I can't have them in the back seat singing word for word. And so word. it just gave me a bigger purpose that's like, 
let me do something outside the box. You know, let me let me make my music clean to the point where when you're listening to it, you're not even realizing like, oh, this is clean music. You just think it's dope because it is, and it's something you can right. play. Whether you with your kids, whether you with your wife, whether you by yourself, it's just universal and broad. And so I remember making that decision in tenth, I mean, in twelfth grade. And every since, you know, I stuck to it. So since 12th grade, no no curses at all in your music. Right. That's what's up, man. You know what I want to do, man? I want to pause. We want to show the progress and, and, and how you changed over time. Can, can you see Can you see the caffeine screen right now? Yeah, I see it. You, you recognize that young buck down there in the corner? Yes, sir. I know him. You know that young boy? He was going crazy at that time. He was going crazy. <laughs> hey, check this out. We're going to let this drum rock real quick. This chief, young chief spitting about the fast food spots. <laughs> and and if you could just put put your uh your Zoom on mute for one second so it's no echo. Turn your, turn your app music on, your volume, so you can hear, hear this. And then we're going to come right back to you, okay? I bet y'all hold Y'all could really appreciate this if Illadelph might because he knows some food spots in Chester, but he do the uh the national joints and the local dip. And this and this more, yeah, more than just Chester. So y'all tune in, man. Turn your speakers up. Yo, hey yo, I'm hot and I'm staying in my bag, dude. Y'all cats suck my flow nuts like cashews. Just to prove that I'm different in y'all bad news. I'ma dedicate this verse to fast food. My Jews like the restaurant. It change every two weeks. The silver on Monday, and then it's Ruby Tuesday. Money come at the um, end of the week. They supply them checks. So after Thursday, I TGIF. Yes, um, I'm married to the game. I deserve a ring. I got beef like food. Call me the Burger King. And them girls get friendly when I'm around. Don't get wild, cause they love to see me smile like McDonald's. That's my word, and I serve like Denny's wasn't easy. Had to go the hard way for the penny Denny. from the bottom. But now that I'm on top like a chimney, my neck was whack, but now it got chilly like Wendy's. Oh, Beat next uh, cargo, it's over for them dick. My pockets full of hundreds, and I keep them nitty fifty. Yeah, and make them girls uh, shake, them, and they make them uh, niggas sick. They just treat my competition like potatoes, get them baked. Oh, I'm uh, that line, yo, cause where I'm from, dudes get high till they get fried like a number five combo. And they ain't yeah. lost no more. They let the lead pop, you put that green like I was going and curl them like a red lobster. It's not uh, nothing, and these dudes all fly. So for that chicken, getting New York fried. I'm in my bag now. I'm a uh, grown man, got my own bar. I'm a grown man. I'm a lone star. Yeah. I like them bras that let her throw it back on me with a half shirt showing more risk than Applebee's. Ooh. I ain't mm. new to the game. They all know it's cheap. So if there's problems like Arby's, then I'm a roast beef. I like them girls. I like them girls. I need them all. I got a shell like Taco Bell when you can eat them all. Mm. I need them dog. And now I get them handled. Put his nugget on the tray like a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Yeah. I don't stay out. You come in the front. I'm out back like the steakhouse. Okay. My whole hell. That's why my flow Cause all my tracks bang like show well. Stop it, you ain't so well. Stop it, bang. Like bottom of the sea. Stop wilding, you ain't a G. If you ride, let me see. It ain't a soft drink when I'm a raspberry is tea. Every man, every man trying to say them checks. I'm getting older. This world colder than JNS. They ain't trying to hire the black man. That's probably why niggas on the block that these are just like Popeyes, nigga. <laughs> Hold up. They don't know about them JNS they cheese fries. The J &S they don't know about the JNS fries, cheese fries, Heist. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Y'all niggas gonna shoot with us? Get shot the fuck up, nigga. Let me tell you. That's somebody. Oh, that's Soldier Boy Wildin'. So, but yeah, they don't know about them JNS cheese fries back in the day. This is the seafood. It, man. You feel me? The man. just, the just greasy. They don't know about the just greasy pizza. That's crazy because I didn't even see that in. I don't even know how long, like how long it's been since you seen that right really? there. At least over ten years. No, wow. we didn't took you back a little bit. That's like, that's the joint that we watched. That's what we watched when we that's first seen. We watched so, yeah. that <laughs> night, and then the next night, it was actually really, if you think about it, the same day, because we we sometimes be broadcasting like late, late. So it was like three, four in the morning when we watched that joint, and then the next night, later that night. Cause now it's morning. So later that night, when Mo Sauce was in the chat and we had the Fire Freestyles only stream, he suggested that John. Word, word, word. And we was all in here like the whole chat was on fire. We were feeling away like we were. We took it back. I don't know how many times that night. You remember this young boy right here? And we like we want that interview, but we were just talking. You know? That was that was pre TLP days. So at that time, that was that freestyle was before getting shot. 
talking about the restaurant joint. Yeah, that was that was that was probably still two thousand and nine, maybe two thousand and eight. Mm -hmm, yeah, that might have mm -hmm. been like right after graduation. So that was pre. So how old were you? They they're asking in the chat. How old were you? Um, they say at that time I had to be like eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. So now this video right now on screen, this is 2012. Yeah. So how, how old was you in 2012? I was 22. 22. And so what I understand, this is Yes God first appearance. First appearance on Yes God. And we, we just going to play just a yes, little God bit. Yes God was big. Yes God was big, big in the city back in the day. I don't yeah. know if he's still doing anything up there, but everybody was tuned in every time he dropped something. You feel me? But we're gonna let a little bit of this play. Let me just hear where you was at mentally at this time. Let me see some. Get it. Take me back. How long how long since you seen this drone? Oh Wow. I see Young T. I said the art when it Remember he said you and in the fuss yeah. times we felt was right hard and then actually it wasn't strangers yeah. turning cousins mm. cousins yeah. turning strangers yeah. friends right. turn enemies the enemies I'm turn dangerous that. man mm. thinking one would things get better now how can you live it up if you settle down no you turn but I bring it back around you everybody depending on me I can't bomb let them down I know they waiting I know they waiting so much pressure is on it's cutting off my circulation and now we happy, we all winners. Glass up for a toast and tilapia for dinner. TLP the business, we giving mm. apps to enter. But we ain't looking for no new members, we still remember. All the times they mm. front it on, now they want to come along. We do it like it's homecoming, anytime we coming home. Real flashbacks, you only see it once. Ever been fighting for your life, but you ain't see the punch. They said you mm. can't make it without the right support. They even fighting said I couldn't life, make it on flight support. Mm. Thinking what caused that? Boom to my abdomen, the doctor said my blood loss could have caused death. Would you mm. keep chasing dreams? Would you fall back? If that was mm. Black's lesson, I guess I passed the test. Hook the machines mm. that was hooked the machines that was hooked the IVs. Needed a tool just to breathe. Now I'm here. Mm. Yeah, and we here. Mm. Listen, I fell in love with the pen, so I proposed to the ink, and then I married the money, having the fans with the bank. I be grinding mm. with my pros, and you know what we think. It's one hand wash another, like we over the sink. They say fool you, fool you, fool you. All them ladies fool you. You say she a groupie, I say she just supporting me. It's funny now, all them same chicks that was avoiding me. All they wanna do is make noise for me. Hear them scream, hear them scream. You would think she trying to harm me. The way she screaming, chief, you would think she in the army. Oh. Oh. We just want to give them a little taste. You know what I mean? We yeah, want them to go check it out that, themselves. That was the young boy. We thing. want them to go check the whole thing out. But that was a young boy, young chiefy. This was, this was. let me see what year this was posted. 012. 2012. 2012. What was going on in life right there? I see you got the TLP shirt on. Yeah, you came out the hospital. This, how, how, what was your mental state? This when we started moving strong. Like, this was two years after, you know, getting shot. So now, you know, I'm walking on my own. I don't need no cane no more. So this is when I'm running full speed. Um, we had the movement, we had the t-shirts, Teen Living Proof, flooding through the city. And at that time, the mindset was just go. Like, mm. like it, was, it was no thing and just go, whatever it was, hey. whoever had a camera, like, what's up, let's do it, let's work. And um, yes, God, like, yes, was, God push... was another person who seen a career grow from high school. So like all mm. those rap battles and stuff I'm talking about that happened through high school, like he was one of them pre people, he was uh, working at the school when I was going there. So each lunch period, every young chief, young chief, like he was there. So he wow. like he literally seen it like this every story just gets yeah, better and better. Process, man. I need, I need I need a biopic or something to mm -hmm. out there. So how old was you again in 2012? 2012 was 22 at that time in that video. So I had 22. to be like 21 or 22. That was summertime of 2012. So yeah, I was 22. Okay. So you born in 90? Yep. Okay, I'm born in 80. Look at that. 10 years apart. Look at that. You feel me? 90s. All right. 90s, baby. I'm 80s, baby, all day. You feel me? But that's how I kept track of my age with the years. So that's why I would keep right. adding you. So in 2000, 2012, you was 22. In 2012, I was 32. You okay. feel me? So that's how I kept up with my age. But, but anyway, brother like me used to forget how old he was. You know what I mean? I look at the age. <laughs> But anyway, man. But yeah, so all right. So now tell me this. How long how long is this before South by Southwest, before uh uh my man um what's the bull name? Sway and all that. What 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 what, what progress is that? This was four years before that. Three. Four years? Four. 
Okay, okay. And then let me ask you, Hope Man One, wh where is that in progression with uh, with your story? Is that how long after this? Hope Man, that was. A mm, that was around the same, I think. Four years after that. About four years. About oh nineteen is what we're we're the first one. Um, no, nah, I wasn't nineteen. It was before then. Sixteen. Sixteen. That's when Hope Man I, started. I got one track off of Hope Man. I want play. You feel me? But I just want to know wh what was the transition? How did you go from Young Chief to Hope Man? Where where was that transition? Or to to Novell Heights? How how did that go? All right. So um, this was two thousand and twelve. Boom. <clears throat> so I didn't move to Atlanta till two thousand and fifteen. So at this time, I think maybe a year from then, when it was 2013, is when we start traveling back and forth to Atlanta. So I was coming here, I was doing shows and the open mics and showcases, but it was to the point where like the crowd would start knowing my song by heart. So it's kind of oh, like yeah. I would come for an open mic, but it's looking like I'm a headliner. Like but, a concert. <laughs> yeah, it start telling me like, oh, I need to be in Atlanta. Like this is where it's at. And you ain't got no opportunities home. So to me, mm. like I could be the first lead a city, kick the door down, and you know, bring some more attention back home. So I moved here in 2015. That's when I had my moment. Um, as I somehow my Daniel fast, you know, when I did that, it's like at the end of that, that's when God gave me like the whole vision. You know, I decided like I, I wanted to hand my card and, you know, I wanted to lead a game. It's time to settle down. And so I remember telling my homies, you know, I think I'm about to get married or something. And they like, man, you 25, you tripping. Like, what you mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. You heard that thing. Yeah, it's like the vision. All 23. For real? For real. It's like the vision came like instantly. Like, like I seen like I the Novell Heist brand, I seen how I wanted to have like my name written. I seen the flyers, everything just started coming to me. And so Hope Man didn't start till a year after that. So it's like, once I had my, my moment, you know, the Daniel fast, when you do that, you know, you super vulnerable. So it's right. like at that So time, vulnerable and so focused at the same time. Yeah, right, and right, I was right. wide open. So it's like anything that I thought I heard from God, like I was moving on it. So it's like, mm. I, I, I would look at my old image and it's like, you know, I don't want nothing else to do with that. Like I want a fresh start. So mm. I remember I, I threw my mixtapes in the trash. Like I had a real moment. I went on and deleted all my social media. He I, wasn't playing. I deleted my YouTube, like I deleted my music off of streaming, my world star videos, wow. like I took everything down and I literally had made like a commitment to God where, where it's like anything happening from this, this point, like nobody else could get the credit, nobody can be on this platform. It's like I'm literally starting from zero in 2015. So whatever happened from this point, everybody know like this is God. So it's like I literally started from zero. I had like 7,000 Instagram followers. I was all over Philly at the time performing. So I had a crazy Philly fan base. I had like a large audience, and I I gave it all away pretty much. Started from scratch and instantly I put out my first uh project. I switched the name to Novell Heist, where it's like I'ma just be myself completely. Like I don't need mm. an artist name. I'm just gonna be me to the fullest. And I knew my name was unique. Like when people were hearing my name, they didn't even think it was my real name. Cause it's like, okay, that sound like heist, like they would think it's H E I S T Heist. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Novell Heist, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it's like, you know, I knew that was unique. So I just ran with that. You know, my mom used to always tell me, celebrate your uniqueness, you know, don't be scared to be different. And so that's when everything started in June of 2015. I put out my project, Faith, Hope and Love. It was like a testimony project where I'm basically like just confessing everything. I'm basically like letting it be known, like where I'm standing and what I'm doing from this point. And it was like instantly I had 200 followers at the time, but I was on a radio like two, three weeks later with Willie Moore Jr. He brought me up to the radio here in Atlanta. He played my song like national radio play at the time where to me. Which one? Which one was he playing at that point? You remember what song? Look What God Done. Okay. Yeah, so that was like one of my biggest songs. I, I connected with somebody here who just volunteered to shoot the video. Like they didn't want no money for it. It was like, you know what? I'm rocking with this. I want to do a video for it. And everything just started coming. So it showed me like, wow, when I had thousands of followers, I was kind of chasing opportunities. But now I start from scratch 
And for people who didn't know me, you would think I'm a new artist. Like you would look at it like he's brand new. He got 100, 200 followers, but now I'm on a radio. Now I'm getting show bookings. Now I'm selling merch and CDs at the time where I basically got nothing. Well, I felt like I had nothing, but you know, that's just when everything started building. So a year later, to go back mm -hmm. to it in 2016 is when in Atlanta, I was going, uh, I did like freestyles. Every week I would drop these weekly freestyles and um, I did the Future Drake Jumpman instrumental. And so, you know, in Future part, he come in with Dope Man, Dope Man. So I wanted to just flip it. I'm just having fun in the booth. Do we have that? Do we have, is that available? Is that on YouTube? Um, I'm not even sure. It might be on Instagram. It might be. I know, I'll, I'll tell you what we do got. Let, let's hit him with a little taste of this. LWGD, look what God done. Let me just hit him with a little taste of this for a second, all right? <laughs> True story. Mm. So this is the this is the actual incident. Look at that. Chief. Shit, give me all the, give me the, give me the money. Oh, you gotta watch. Give me uh. What God done, y'all. Sometimes in life it feel like we going in circles. I learned that it's just best to be still and listen. Be still and listen. Now I see life with a whole different point of view. It wasn't me that did this. Hey, look what God done. Look what God done for me. Oh. I know a lot of your music had a message you feel me yeah and, and and it seemed like it was the same message man like i couldn't have did this without god you feel me and and do you feel how, how big of an instrument and and when did you really start feeling that way was it from young or or was it after certain incidents um it was really moving to atlanta like i mean i grew up in a church but as far as mm -hmm. like having my own personal connection you know experience yeah mm -hmm. like when i got to atlanta i remember um like it was like I was just trying to trying to find my way, you know. Like I I I, I was knowing what my worth was, so it's like okay, I know I'm worth more than just doing showcases and open mics. Like it can't just be this. Now I'm in this big city. I just need some guidance. I need some, some focus, some structure. And um, I I walked to church that day. That was my first time in church, and 
it was like a, a group of youth that was like my age, like 20 and the 20 year old range and everything. And they was all in the front of the uh, stage. And just to see like walking into that, that was different for me. Like I never seen mm. that before. Like when I would go to church, like the other kids who there, they there just like me, you know, you there with your parents. It's not like the right. choice of, oh yeah, I want to go to church today. And so when I seen that, that was the first time it opened something up to me. And when I'm looking on stage, like they they look like me, like they was on stage doing mm. merch up with fitted hats on and polo shirts and jeans. And so to me, this was like my first time of my eyes being open. So mm. yeah, that's when you know, uh, just building my own yeah. personal connection. That's when they yeah, right. started we don't, uh, serious. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. When I play this next track. Okay. We we gonna play. We, we ain't gonna hold you too long. I know I, I didn't kept you way over what I asked you to stay, man. You've been so gracious, I'm sorry, man. Sorry, but this is just so intriguing. Right, but you got an awesome man, I'm story. Playing this, man. I'm in, the you got, stories it, are like lining up like so crazy. It don't even make sense. We, yeah. The Daniel Fast. We did Daniel Fast for for I don't know how many years. Yeah, for years, years and years. <laughs> that Daniel years. Fast got me right too, man. Like, yeah. Word, word, word. Everything. And so you know, yeah, it's a lot of parallels between y'all's relationship and ours. So it is. It's crazy. And, and, and even just your story is providing hope. Sometimes just telling your story provides hope That's for the next man because you never know what they're going through at the time. So we really appreciate you coming through. You know what I mean? We, we're we going to play maybe one or two more tracks and then he's going to finish up, you know what I'm saying, with a little quick, quick, uh, a little, little spittage for us. You know what I mean? Some bars. And then we're going to, we're going to, we ain't going to hold them too long, man. But, uh, What's your favorite track on this Hope Man 3? Which what you want the people to hear? We're going to just give them a little taste. I'm not going to Say it again. Well, uh, if you want to get on some recent, you know, the latest stuff I got out is the STEMI pack. STEMI pack? Yeah, the okay. STEMI pack. I just released that. Um, oh, you could give them Harold Williams flow. Have y'all listened to that yet? I did, yep. Who, who was Harold Williams, Williams to you? That was my grandpa. Uh, all right, so the day that I got shot was June 27th. So I look at that as like my second chance at life, like my second birthday. So every year I was celebrated. And so this year, June 27th, you know, that's also my grandpa birthday. And so on this day that I was like, I'm celebrating my second chance of life. And then I get the news that he passed away on his birthday. So it's wow. like a bittersweet moment where the best way I could just get those emotions wow. off, wow. putting this into music and it's crazy because when I released the track, it was a personal record for me. But to see the feedback from it, it's like everybody, well, a lot of people experienced the loss. So the way that this song registered and connected to people all around the world was just crazy that it showed me like sometimes God could use your pain to be mm. like somebody else breakthrough or healing. Mm. My dad and I were literally just saying that. And that's a big fact. My dad and I were literally just saying that a lot of the things that we go through are not even really always for us. It's for somebody else. Somebody else to benefit. So you can be a testimony to uplift and encourage somebody else on, on how you were blessed and that, you know, they'll be blessed too. Yeah. Let's get a taste of this Harold Williams flow. And you know, I can't, I can't, I cannot in the, in the stream without, you feel me? We're we going to definitely play a little bit of that as well. But y'all turned up, man. We about to get this Harold Williams flow. You know saying? Let it be an inspiration to you. Turn your speakers up one time. I better turn my speakers up first. Hold up. Yeah, my second. Yeah. June 27th. I celebrated my 11th year anniversary and my second chance at life. That day was also my grandpa's birthday. And he got his angel wings. I'ma start this off with R.I.P. Grandpa. This what I do with the pain. This that Harold Williams flow. Long live your name. Though the feeling kinda strange, still a legacy remains. I see the sunshine, but down the street I'm seeing rain like Georgia weather. We might need to go invest in some more umbrellas. You know the prophecy is real. Ain't no fortune tellers. Give me space. I need mushroom like portabellas. It's like I'm sad, but I'm grateful. In my lifetime, I witnessed four generations. Black men raising black men. Four generations. Let this go viral. We need more demonstrations. Put a cast on positivity, embrace it Now I'm picking up the phone, making sure my father good Yeah, this the results of black fatherhood Switching the narrative, showing what a parent is Don't take life for granted, every moment I'ma cherish it I made a plan to visit you in a week 
I ain't think that week would be a funeral That show me it's about what you do at hard times And it's less about what hard times do to you So if you still got your people in your life Make sure you hold them tight You never know the night When they go see the light Mixed emotions that I bottle still I think it hurt more just not knowing how to feel A bit confusing, I know Just let my thoughts pour I wish we spent more time I wish I caught more If these the cards we was dealt Let me talk more It's feeling like you got uno Ain't got a draw for But we still here to leave it all on the hardwood Shooting for the sky, now that's what I call Star Wars When I'm sad, still I smile often This pain got emotions raw like wild cost scrimp Got me thinking about then and again Emotional Make sure you hold on to everybody close to you That's what we supposed to do Man, life's so short, so why we treat people like they all disposable Make sure you cherish every minute you got You never know when that minute will stop But when it do, just remember this bop Before your family or friends in the box Make sure you give them all the love that's inside And though I know you in a better place Looking down from heaven's gates Really, we should celebrate, cause you no longer suffering I asked God to cover me, he gave me a covering The more I go through life, it's like my purpose I'm discovering Now I ain't gonna Lie, I'm just gonna fly. I ain't have to make the song cry. I know I'm gonna cry. Now you with your wife, give a beautiful kiss. Got Angel Wayne's for your birthday, a beautiful gift. Mm. Fire. Rest in heaven, Grandpa Bates. I'ma miss you. Yeah. Hey, if you still got your loved ones in your life, make sure they know how you feel. Never let a day. Man, we're going to end it like that right there. Go ahead, dig a hole, go and bury yourself. Try to eat up to the kill plate, bathroom your health.